Uh, just to give a few examples, and I stress again they're misleading because they're few, uh, take, say, the question of freedom of press. That's a picket because it's obviously a matter that the press is naturally much concerned about. And in fact, uh, you, the press has been very much concerned about freedom of the press in the last decade. Let's just keep to the last decade. Uh, in the last decade, there's been plenty of material in the press about freedom of the press, uh, mainly in Latin America. And uh, ask your friends to name one newspaper in Latin America that uh, has raised freedom of press issues. Uh, which newspaper in Latin America has been suppressed unfairly by uh, a state, and therefore we have to defend it? Well, you know, 99 people out of 100 will name La Prensa in Nicaragua. Uh, and the reason they'll name it is because there's been massive coverage of the tribulations of La Prensa in Nicaragua. Uh, there was a study by, in Harper's Magazine by Francisco Goldman, a media analyst, who found uh, that the New York Times alone was giving like, something like five references a month. That's more than one a week to the tribulations of La Prensa in Nicaragua. That's probably more coverage than all freedom of the press issues throughout the rest of the world combined. Probably much more, in fact. Well, that's an interesting choice. Uh, uh, we can take a look at it. Uh, not, not only coverage, but also um, enthusiastic uh, support. I mean, the, for example, in, in 1986, in June 1986, there was an interesting series of events. Uh, the World Court condemned the United States for its unlawful use of force and violation of treaties uh, in its war against Nicaragua and called upon the United States to desist from these crimes. Congress responded to this by uh, voting $100 million in aid to increase, to accelerate the unlawful use of force. Uh, the Reagan administration announced that this is for real, this is a real war. Uh, and there was enthusiastic coverage of that. The World Court decision was simply dismissed as an annoying bit of nonsense, uh, either ignored or falsified, but anyway dismissed. It's the court that was the criminal, not the United States. Uh, the, uh, in response to this uh, virtual declaration of war, as the Reagan administration described it, the Nicaraguan government suspended La Prensa. And that led to virtual hysteria in the United States. The uh, Neiman Fellows, the journalism fellows at Harvard, uh, off immediately gave the owner of La Prensa, Violeta Chamorro, a, an award. Uh, the Washington Post had a big editorial saying she deserves 10 awards. You know, uh, it's a newspaper of valor. That was the head of the, that was the heading. The Murray Kempton, the left liberal columnist in the New York Review, uh, issued a plea to people to provide funds for La Prensa to keep its equipment going, that those funds could be added to the rather substantial CIA uh, subvention to La Prensa ever since 1979, uh, and on and on. Uh, well, uh, what is La Prensa? Uh, La Prensa is an interesting newspaper. It's probably unique in history. Uh, it's often believed that La Prensa is the newspaper that courageously opposed the, the Somoza dictatorship. And if you read the press, that's what you would believe. Well, it does have the same name as that newspaper, but that's about where it ends. Uh, in uh, 1980, the, uh, right after the Sandinista Revolution, the owners of La Prensa uh, fired the editor, and 80% uh, of the staff left with him uh, because the staff and the editor refused to support their uh, pro-contra policy. Now, the editor and the staff formed another newspaper, El Nuevo Diario, uh, and if a newspaper is constituted of its editor and its staff, that's the old La Prensa. If a newspaper is constituted of the money that's behind it, well, of course, the new La Prensa is the old La Prensa. So you just decide how to decide now what a newspaper is. Is it the staff and the editor, or is it the owners and the equipment? Uh, this you'll never read about, but it's a fact. Now, the new La Prensa, uh, supports the overthrow of the government by a foreign power and does it quite openly, and it's funded by the foreign power that is trying to overthrow the government. Now, that's pretty unusual. In fact, I can't think of any remote parallel in the history of the Western democracies. So, for example, during the Second World War, uh, England did not permit Nazi Germany to, put, to fund and run a major newspaper in London, and the United States did not permit Japan, say, uh, to dominate... Uh, you know, to, to invest in and run a major newspaper coming out of New York. In fact, uh, we don't have to go that far. Uh, England and the United States imposed harsh censorship 
Uh, they wouldn't even let tiny little uh, uh, dissident newspapers go through the mails or appear and, and so on. Uh, there's, no there's no remote parallel in Western history to this as far as I can see. Uh, this, incidentally, is never mentioned in media commentary. Well, nevertheless, a true civil libertarian will defend La Prensa from harassment, even though this is unique in human history, this fact. Because if you're a real civil libertarian, uh, you think that uh, the United States should have allowed Japan and Germany to dominate the American media during the Second World War, if you're a real civil libertarian. Uh, but. Uh, uh, we, we now ask, we, are not, we now make the obvious question, I mean, we ask whether the, um, you know, the great excitement, the uh, virtual hysteria of American intellectuals over La Prensa is, reflects their libertarian passions uh, or whether it's because they believe, uh, or whether it's because they're serving power, as a propaganda model predicts. That's a fair question, and there's a test. There's an obvious test, and we all know how to apply it. It's a test that we apply all the time when we look at our enemies. So, for example, suppose you take a look at the productions of the um, East German uh, Peace Group or the World Peace Council, which is sort of a communist front organization. You read their publicity, their, and you'll see that they have a lot of criticisms of the United States, often very valid criticisms. Uh, in fact, their critical discussion of repression in the United States and in U.S. Uh, dependencies not only is often valid, but it's often the kind of thing that's not reported here. Well, do we honor them for that? No, of course not. We regard them with contempt. And the reason is by, because we apply a very simple and obvious test. We ask, what do they say about the repression and atrocities for which they're responsible? What do they say about Soviet repression and atrocities? And as soon as we find out the answer to that question, we just simply dismiss them with contempt, rightly. Uh, uh, you begin by talking about your own responsibility, and then sort of, you know, on a footnote somewhere, you can talk about the bad things done by other guys at least if you regard yourself as a moral agent, you know, as somebody worthy of minimal respect and attention. Uh, we understand that in the case of our enemies, and we might have enough honesty to apply the same test to ourselves, so let's try it. Uh, we can now apply the test. We have this tremendous libertarian passion over La Prensa, the first newspaper in history, uh, to be funded by a foreign power calling for the overthrow of the government uh, uh, in which it appears, in which it's published. And remember, this is not a major power. It's not like the United States, which was never under threat during the Second World War. This is a poor third world country, which is barely able to survive the attack of a superpower. So we, we have that. And we can ask how the same press has reacted uh, to other examples of repression during the same period, in fact, in the same area. Well, there are test cases. So let's try a few. Uh, let's take El Salvador, right nearby, except the US client. Uh, there once was an independent press in El Salvador, two small newspapers, uh, La Cronica and El Independiente, two small newspapers. They were not supported by a foreign power trying to overthrow the government. They were not particularly left-wing. Uh, they were independent, run by businessmen. They sort of challenged the distribution of power. You know, they said maybe we should have some land reform or something like that. Well, they're not around anymore. Uh, they're not around because the government that we arm, fund, train, and support uh, sent its security forces to destroy them. Uh, one newspaper was eliminated by the simple device of uh, taking an editor and a photojournalist who were in a San Salvador restaurant, taking them out, security forces went in, took them outside, cut them to pieces with machetes, and left them in a ditch. At that point, the owner fled, and that took care of one newspaper. Uh, the second newspaper took a little harder, it took uh, several bombings, uh, th three assassination attempts on the editor. Uh, finally, the army surrounded the premises with tanks and uh, then broke in and smashed the place up and destroyed it. They had previously a machine gunning attack. It killed a newsboy. At that point, the editor fled. That took care of the second newspaper. Uh, well, that was uh, eight years ago. Uh, so we can now ask, uh, how much attention did that receive? That's an example of a violation of freedom of the press, a little more severe than the uh, harassment of La Prensa. Uh, well, there's an answer to that. You can check the New York Times, for example. It has never received one word of mention in the New York Times news columns. It has never received one editorial mention uh, in all of these years. And the same is true of the other media. It simply doesn't matter. These are atrocities committed by our clients, uh, the guys we pay and train to do that sort of thing. Uh, so all of a sudden, our concern for freedom of the press disappears. Uh, or let's take another U.S. client, in fact, the major U.S. client, Israel, which receives by far the major U.S. aid. Uh, 
and is again not a small country under attack by a superpower. Uh, well, uh, here, here too, history has set up some interesting tests. Uh, the same, at exactly the same time that Nicaragua suspended La Prensa after uh, the virtual declaration of war uh, in violation of the world court proceedings, at the very same time, Israel closed down, closed down permanently two Jerusalem newspapers, Arab newspapers, of course, closed down two Jerusalem newspapers uh, on the charge that uh, the security forces had claimed that they were supported by a terrorist group, by a hostile group. Well, that went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court judged that that was legitimate because, in it, as it explained in its judgment, uh, no state will ever permit uh, no, a business, no matter how legitimate it is, that's supported by hostile elements. Uh, and although we have freedom of speech in Israel, it does not extend to uh, activities that might threaten the security of the state. Uh, well, how much cover that's much more severe than what happened in the La Prensa case, so how much coverage did that get? Well, actually, that did get one mention in the U.S. press. Uh, it was mentioned in a letter of mine in the Boston Globe commenting on the hypocrisy of the Neiman Fellows. Uh, notice that the, they did not give a prize to these editors. In fact, that was never even reported. Uh, after the Central America Peace Accords, um, La Prensa was opened. Uh, the week right at the time it was opened, uh, Israel closed a Nazareth newspaper that's inside Israel, closed a Nazareth newspaper permanently on grounds that it uh, had, uh, it was supported again by hostile elements. The editor again went to the Supreme Court, uh, pleaded that everything that appeared in the newspaper passed through censorship, that was disregarded, on the grounds that uh, if the state says it's supported by hostile elements, that's all that's required. You never need any evidence when the state comes along and says security reasons, the courts just accept it. Uh, they also closed a, a news office in Nablus on the grounds that uh, the editor who had already been in, who was already in jail, in fact, he was in jail for having alleged, not without charge, without legal charge on the claim that he had contact with hostile elements. Uh, his wife had been running the newspapers, claimed that she'd maintained those contacts. So they closed the press office. Well, how much coverage did that get in the, in the U.S. press? Answer, as far as I can find, zero uh, in both cases. Well, I could, here's, two, here's some real controlled experiments that history was kind enough to set up for us. I picked the week of the suspension of La Prensa and the week of the opening of La Prensa. I picked a case in El Salvador. Just to round it off, let's take our other client state, Guatemala, and let's come up to more recent times. Uh, Guatemala, uh, we, the United States enthusiastically supported a vast outbreak of terror and violence in Guatemala in the early 80s. Uh, the Reaganites were positively uh, passionate in their enthusiasm for this. Uh, maybe 100,000 people were slaughtered, something like that. Uh, maybe something roughly of that neighborhood. However, after a uh, sufficient massacre had been carried out, uh, they had uh, what's called a democratic election, uh, and uh, uh, there's supposed to be a democracy in Guatemala. That's what they tell us. Well, one of the pe during this uh, uh, period of U.S.-backed slaughter, uh, they didn't have any censorship. Uh, it, the problems of the press were taken care of simply by murdering journalists. About 50 journalists were murdered, uh, including, you know, television journalists right in the middle of broadcasts and so on. And for some reason, you didn't need any censorship when that was going on. In fact, that was never barely discussed. You'll find bare mention of it in the press. Well, after the return of democracy, which we pride ourselves on, uh, one of the editors who had fled and was living in Mexico decided to return. And he opened a small newspaper about a year ago, last February, called La Epoca. Again, it wasn't calling for the overthrow of the government. It wasn't supported by a foreign power. It was just a kind of a left liberal journal, small left liberal journal. When he came back to uh, Guatemala, uh, there were immediately death threats from the uh, death squads, which are just adjuncts to the security forces, uh, warning him that he was either going to be killed or flee. He wasn't going to allow to run that newspaper. He nevertheless went ahead, and the newspaper published a couple of issues. Uh, and uh, then uh, in July, uh, 15 armed men broke into the offices, firebombed them, kidnapped the night watchman, uh, and destroyed the premises. Uh, the next day, the editor, Brian Barrera, held a press conference to which no one came, except some people from the European press, uh, and said that plainly there's no possibility for free expression in Guatemala. Uh, he then received another death threat, warning him he better get out of the country, he'd be killed. Uh, he was taken to the airport by a European ambassador, 
to make sure that he could get out alive, uh, and he fled back to Mexico. Well, how much coverage did that get? Answer, zero. Nothing in the New York Times, nothing in the Washington Post. That's just last year. Now, it's not that they didn't know about it. We know perfectly well that they knew about it. Uh, first of all, because it was on the international, it was on the wires and so on and so forth, but also because they themselves referred to it obliquely later. Uh, about a month later, there was an article in the New York Times on some cultural conference in Guatemala back in the arts pages, uh, and the uh, uh, correspondent who went there had some remark buried in there about uh, 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 La Epoca. The tr point is it just doesn't matter. I mean, that's, uh, it's not just harassment and suppression, it's it's, you know, destruction and physical destruction and murder, but it's carried out by our clients, so it doesn't matter. Well, those are the kinds of things you find when you look.